Folks, this is Shock, and we're going to do a video today on Islam. And I got to change freeways here, so we're going to curve uh, to an on ramp on the right over here. And here we go. Now, you know, we have a conference room, which you can see right below this video if you click um, show more info or more info. And we have uh, Muslims that go into our conference room they've always been polite and kind and stuff but we the Muslims and the Christians agree on one thing we agree that both Islam and Christianity cannot be true at the same time either one is true and one is false but both Islam and Christianity cannot be true at the same time it can be true that one is true and one is false, but they both cannot be true. So let's go through uh, some reasons why I reject wholeheartedly Islam. And this is not to be uh, anything personal to my Muslim friends that come into the conference room. But let me go through, is this guy going to get over in front of me? Because I'm going to break to the right if he doesn't. Okay. First of all, the, the main problem I have with Islam, now I gotta break to the left, is that it denies Jesus Christ is the very Son of God, the Messiah, that died and rose from the dead. Now, in this video, I'm gonna talk about one main contention, and that is that I believe scripture is clear that everybody, including myself and Muslims, atheists, pagans, Wiccans, everybody, we all fall short of God's standard. This is obviously clear throughout scripture. It says our righteousness is like filthy rags to God. And it says all have fallen short of the glory of God. So, it, you know, me included, we've all fallen short of God's standard. God's standard is not an atheist standard or a pagan or Wiccan standard or a Muslim standard. It is his standard. Now God's standard, if you forget about what we want for a moment, in our very uh, stupid times of 2011, here's a good idea. Let's forget about our opinions for a moment and let's look at God's opinion on the matter. Sometimes I picture a big classroom and everyone's voicing their opinion and in the back God raises his hands up and says hey you know uh, I got something to say on this anyone want to hear what I got to say so let's give it throttle and let me tell you what God says on the matter God's standard is absolute holiness perfection sinlessness and I only know of one person throughout history Hold on, a big giant bug just splattered on my field. I only know of one person throughout history who did that. Just by saying it, I've already answered the question, is Jesus Christ. Now, the problem I see with Islam is it fails to recognize God's holy standard. And since Muslims are sinners, just like atheists and, and I'm a sinner, We do not have a propitiation for our sin in Islam. We don't. You still fall short of God's standard, which is absolute perfection. Now, another problem I have with Islam is it denies that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. You know, Scripture says that this is Antichrist. In fact, it even says in the Quran, um, that Jesus oh get this I gotta tell you something else that just popped in my head it talks about Jesus never dying on the cross well wh why would they even bring up the cross in the first place why would they change the story see Islam says that at the last minute it's so bizarre 
at the last minute they did like a switcheroo and they put Judas on the cross instead of Jesus which is not historical that's that's a forgery of facts now if that did happen which it did but let's just play the game and say it did uh, hypothetically well then we, we all die in our sins and there is no salvation because Judas was a sinner Jesus was not a sinner you can't find any instances where Jesus sinned now we had some Muslims in the conference room last night and I tried to reason with them and I said look how do you explain this parable then that Jesus said and by the way Islam recognized this parable what I'm about to say the Muslims recognize this as truly spoken by Jesus Christ they won't argue with you on that they don't argue with you that Jesus existed they don't argue with that their argument comes with Jesus being the very Son of God they believe Jesus is just some prophet the, one of the greatest prophets or even the greatest prophet <coughs> besides their Muhammad so I asked my Muslim friends, I said, look, Jesus talks about him being the very Son of God. And so let's go through this uh, parable that Jesus says. Jesus talks about the, a certain man that owns a vineyard. And the man is going away on a far journey. It's very windy, so I'm kind of shouting. And these guys that are taking care of the vineyard for the, uh, the owner of the vineyard. They're called husbandmen, husbandmen. They're basically like keeping uh, charge of his vineyard and they're responsible for why he's gone. So Jesus then talks about the owner of the vineyard sending people there. These represents prophets of God throughout the ages. But he says that he sends these his servants there to uh, check on the vineyard and these husbandmen that were in charge of the vineyard they beat up these uh, servants that the vineyard owner is sending and they keep beating them up and everything and these servants so to speak that the vineyard owner is sending represent as I said prophets of God throughout history that mankind has rejected so then Jesus says the ultimate proof that he is the very son of God he says but then the vineyard owner said you know what I'll do I'll send my son it might be that they will respect him but the complete opposite happens what happens when he sends his son and there's something in the road here look at this let me make sure I don't hit that when they send his son representing Jesus Christ here's listen closely what the husbandmen say they say aha we got the heir and an heir is spelled h-e-i-r in other words the heir of the father the son let's kill him they say and the inheritance will be ours well he, Jesus is referring to himself and I wish this guy would go faster. All right, here we go I have the need for a little more speed going So Jesus Jesus clearly Clearly is talking about himself in that passage Being the very Son of God now One of my Muslim friends last night said well, we're all sons of God and this is not true in fact um, there's another parable where Jesus says he's talking to the people there and he's calling them slaves he goes look you're slaves to your sin and they say to Jesus we've never been slaves to anyone and Jesus basically says not so anyone who has sinned is a slave to their sin Muslim you're a slave to your sin atheist you're a slave to your sin I was a slave to my sin but then Jesus Christ says look the slave has no place 
in the house. He says, but the, but the sun has a place there forever. And Jesus says, if the Son of Man comes and sets you free, you will be free indeed. So Jesus refers to people that are in sin, really, as slaves. My Muslim friends, why would you want to continue in your slavery? My atheist, pagan, wicked friends, why would you want to continue in your slavery? When Jesus Christ has set us free, get rid of the ball and chain. Get rid of it. Now, back to Islam. So, that my Muslim friend says, well, we're all sons of God. And so he's basically saying that all these servants that the vineyard owner is sending are sons of God also? And he would say yes to that. Well, then why is it obvious in this parable that Jesus says that the, the father says, I will send my son, they will respect him. Perhaps they'll respect him. And it's obviously different. You could tell it's different because when the son goes there, the husbandmen say, aha, this is the heir. Let's kill him and we will have the inheritance. It is clearly my Muslim friends talking about Jesus being the very son of God, not just the prophet. Other problems that I have with Islam is you can see it on YouTube. For example, you guys know that, man, I got a lot of bumps here. You guys know that um, I believe scripturally that homosexuality is a sin. But I love folks, that, <coughs> excuse me, I love folks in the homosexual life. I want them to be saved. I don't want them to be killed. I saw a very disturbing video on YouTube where there were these Muslims that are very strict with sh uh, their um, Shakira, hold on a second, their Sharia law. I want to make sure I don't get squished by this car. They're very strict with their Sharia law, and what they did is they doused the homosexuals with gasoline or something, they threw them alive in a hole and lit them on fire. Uh, and I don't see this in Christianity. What I see is groups like I believe Exodus International, which really lovingly and caringly care for the people in the homosexual lifestyle, and they preach the gospel of salvation to them. We want people that are in the homosexual lifestyle saved. That's the difference between Christianity and um, the root cause of uh, Islam. Okay. Um, one la uh, excuse me, one last thing. I'm yelling, my voice is getting hoarse here. All right, I'm going up some hills here. I love this hill. One last thing here. This is very important. The very nature of the God in the Quran is totally different than the real God of Bible scripture. See, the God of the Quran does not have unconditional love. You have to do works to come into that, that God's love. Check it out for yourself. But the God of the Bible, the one true God, it says, while we were yet sinners, He loved us. And He sent His only begotten Son to us that whosoever shall believe in Him shall not perish but have everlasting life but in the Quran you don't have unconditional love from the God of the Quran you have to do works good works to come into love with the God of Quran of the Quran the God of Islam so in closing I would like to say this is why I reject Islam I believe it's a threat to the world. I believe it is Antichrist. It even says uh, in the Quran, look it up for yourself, it says, make no Christian or Jew your friends. So I wholeheartedly reject Islam. Jesus Christ is the answer. God bless you guys.